2.4 running at 40 megahertz, so there's not a lot of interference. The second radio is a 5.4, 5.8. in Europe, or what I call the SE standard, we handle both of those DFSs, uh, the version 1.51 and the 1.21. That's pretty significant uh, for Europe. It's about 36, it's 36 and change for the EIR case, so we're close to 36. Uh, the operating frequency is 5.4 to 5.8, and the FCC we have on the 5.725 to 5.8, and the 2.4 is from 2.4 to 2.462. Hardware specifications, we have two different SKUs for AC and DC. Uh, the AC units are 90 to 260, and the DC SKUs are 48 volts. So you can tell by our average uh, power consumption and DC consumption, it's a one watt radio. So on the average, on the AC, it's 84, on the DC, it's 66. Two gig Ethernet ports on there. Uh, we can configure those for cameras or switches. Uh, we use the gig Ethernet port. Some of our competitors only have a 10 by 100 Ethernet on their access point. You really need a gig Ethernet port if you're going to be dealing in. in. So we have an RJ45. We do 802.11.3 AF out. Um, so we only do PoE out. As far as the three-stage hardware reset button, we use that uh, mostly for an in indoor lab uh, reset. Network operation status is all on the LEDs. So these are the dimensions. You can get all this information for the date from the data sheet online. A little bit about the operating. Um, significant here is the wind survivability of 165, so we'll handle a hurricane, uh, type 5 hurricane. Uh, typical core software features, 16 uh, wireless LANs, multi-radio multi mesh. Uh, something significant that we do that I know our competitors don't do, we mesh on the 2.4 and 5.8. If I lost my 2.4 radio, I don't automatically mesh to the 5.8. If I lost my 5X radio, I automatically uh, mesh to the 2.4. So I can interchange them. I can set up meshes on both. I could do multi-meshes. Um, pretty significant feature when you're dealing with a wireless network. Outdoor. These other features are pretty standard in the um, mesh world. The mesh routing protocols, again, uh, on the 7181, I support both mesh connects and spanning tree. Uh, client security, biggest thing here, I stand, uh, standardize on all the uh, Wi-Fi uh, security. Something that I do AP to AP is something called secure mesh uh, with AES encryption. That's the first thing I would ask you. Other meshing access points, what do they do AP to AP? So we have uh, basically implemented a secure mesh, which is close to a, a PSK key. So the messaging on 7181 is really 0301, 0 because there's no uh, stick antennas. It's an integrated panel. That a depth panel brings a lot of added value to your outdoors. And the 300 megabits, remember I kept saying, get to that second data stream. So you have to truly do at the mesh layer high bandwidth um, to be able to get to that second data rate. And it's a seamless network, indoor, outdoor. You can come to Motorola and get all handheld, indoor, enterprise, outdoor. We've done a lot with our mobile computing units, and we can integrate the whole solution. So a little bit about ADAPT uh, versus uh, vertical dipole sticks. Whenever you start putting antennas really close to each other, you're going to get interference versus what we did with ADEPT. So we integrated um, in ADEPT the vertical and horizontal polarization for every band. So coming off of the radio, we have special features in that AP to actually get rid of interference out there and do what I call um, a really smart antenna technology. Something else we did was a software electronic down tilt. Um, I had a lot of deployments over the past 10 years if they wanted to concentrate coverage, they'd have to go do a truck roll and replace that on these sticks. Well, we did that in software. So you can actually do a software electronic down software on the 2-4 radio instead of a bucket truck roll. You really don't know that until you do the deployment. So that's a uh, key feature. No coverage gap, gaps from multi-stick antennas. If you have those omni sticks, there's definitely coverage blocking because of the interference. So there'll be what that means in English is if you go underneath or near the access point, you're going to have dead spots. You're not going to have that type of dead spot with the ADEPT and the 7181. And more compact and aesthetic, and it gives more choices for mounting location. So these are the four key features in the ADEPT antenna system. 
self-shadowing avoidance, dynamic interference avoidance, polarization diversity, and software electronic downtail. So, okay, so what is that self-shadowing? So if you look to the picture to the left, you see those red notches? If you actually had a client move into those areas, you'd have dead spots. And that has to do just with the nature of omni sticks that are very closely put next to each other. And that would happen on an access point. What we did on the 71 and 81, we have true omni coverage in directionals because of how we did those panels. Dynamic interference avoidance for change. So what that means in English is that on the 7181, we maximize the receive on uh, chain three while ignoring interference on chain one and two. You're going to see a lot of interference outdoors. Whenever you go outdoors, you're going to see all the access points in everybody's houses. You're going to see other RF interference. So we really paid attention to what we did to that antenna system by um, ignoring interference that's coming in on multiple chains. And this really helps low power devices. So dynamic interference avoidance uh, for the different chains is built into that antenna system. Dynamic interference avoidance for polarization, what that means is 7181 will maximize the receive on the horizontal polarized antennas while rejecting interference on the vertical. So that's basically uh, both a vertical polarized signals might be coming from other stick antenna access points out there. We'll just ignore it. But we'll pay attention to what I call our low-powered um, clients that are out there. And this is done on a per-packet basis. Software electronic downtown, great feature. So I don't have to determine that I need better coverage or two port coverage underneath my access point. I can wait till I deploy it. Depending on the height of where you place the 7181, you determine if you would actually do a down tilt. And you don't have to decide that until you actually deploy the node. This prevents a truck roll. And in the previous to, um, places, I've seen that we've had to do truck rolls and replace all the antennas with uh, omni down tilt. So this is a great feature, uh, great for the deployment team. They love it. Uh, determining the coverage with the AP71. So if you look to the left, you'll see the total today's technology. So it'll take, you know, let's just say six access points to cover that area. And if you look at our 7181, our 802.11n technology, we'll need three to cover the same uh, type of area. But this only works if you can support that second data stream outdoors. So it's a, it comes down to a node spacing. A little bit about Mesh Connect. So Mesh Connect is our routing engine in there. It uses a hybrid of the proactive and reactive solution. Think of the 802.11s that's coming down pipe, the meshing standard. That's actually a hybrid, too. Uh, we sit on that committee, so you're going to see a lot coming from Motorola on that. So proactive means all the routes are consistently updated for fast communication. For large networks, it requires too much time to develop different routing tables, and it provides a lot of uh, high uh, overhead and coverage. So fast convergence is best route. You need a combination of proactive and reactive. And that's exactly what we do in Mesh Connect. And again, I said we have over 125 patents in this area uh, for mobility. So in a reactive mode, you only maintain the neighbor list. But it's slow to react if um, adverse conditions happen in the network. So we did the right balance. We've studied this for years. We have a lot of uh, experience with uh, meshing outdoors in a mobile environment. So our convergence is done in milliseconds. So we basically took a hybrid. You'll see that uh, we follow the 802.11s standards committee. I believe will be a firmware upgrade uh, to this technology compared to what I consider our competitors, Orla or something called adaptive rate link adaptation. It's something that we combine. This is a key decision element in Mesh Connect. And um, you'll see the graph down there if we do Aura. What this means is I'm always looking for a better data rate. Most people just take the reference design from the vendors, ship it out there. So when they stick to a data rate, they'll stay at the lowest data rate. Well, that's inherent in the chip design. So the data rate is not, may not be acceptable outdoor. We will keep actively programming to determine the better rate and force a better rate with faster convergence. So this, along with Mesh Connects, is what I consider a, a lot of added value for Motorola. We spent a lot of time on this and have a lot of time. So achieving the 300 megabits outdoors. So the uh, AP71, how do we really accomplish this? Well, it has to do with doing the 3x3 on the backhaul or the 5x radio. 
and 